The final individual category tonight is the amateur player category. Tonight we honor a woman who had a stellar professional career, but what she did as an amateur was truly unprecedented before and since. The Kelly Keeney story is a family tale about a passionate father who taught his children to excel at God, a warm and supportive mother who taught them how to excel at life, and a trio of siblings whose achievements in the game are unprecedented, but whose triumphs extend deep into their personal lives as well. On the course, each kid accomplished as the other. Well, sort of. All of the Keeney kids have outstanding high school careers, but only one captured the Texas State High School Championship for consecutive seasons. You might say that the boys had a more um, well-rounded high school record as each won and lost tournaments. Kelly's performances were far more monotonous. Arrive, play, win, repeat, 20 times. Yes, in 20 high school tournaments, Kelly Keeney won 20, an unprecedented feat in the game's greatest state. While still in high school, she won the family's first USDA championship, the girls' junior, in 1994. The following year, she added the family's second title at the women's amateur and added a third the year after, successfully defending her crown. That year, she also added the British ladies' amateur title and represented the USA for the first time as a member of the 1996 Curtis Cup team. Hank and Tripp would each add a USGA championship to the family total, becoming the only sibling trio in more than 120 years of USGA competition to achieve that feat. That Kelly has more than her brothers combined is not a statistic to dwell on this evening. An All-American at UT, she joined the LPGA Tour winning in her second season and again represented the USA two more times as a fiery Solheim Cup competitor. Kelly's fires never burned more fiercely than when she was representing her country. Unless, of course, she was representing her family. As happens, new branches on the Keeney family tree grew and where Father Ernie's guidance yielded spectacular golf success, Mother Pam's gentle direction now generated benefit far beyond any trophy case. Let it rip, potato chip. That was Pam Keeney's favorite piece of advice for Kelly on the course. And Kelly let that unbridled enthusiasm flow into her personal life as well. Finding the love of her life came with an added benefit. Morgan Doremus, her husband Paul's adorable daughter. Kelly was a mom. And three years ago, she and Paul added a son to the mix. Perhaps one day, young Ford will win a USGA trophy, and the male Keenies can finally match Kelly's total. <laughs> Until then, this family holds on to one another through the bad times and the good, always playing life as it lies. Ladies and gentlemen, Pam Keeney's daughter, Kelly. Wow. Um, I had no idea. Sorry, I'm short. Um, don't laugh. <laughs> Help me get through this. Um, the song you heard, and of course I had no idea, Mr. Strait, that you were going to be in this room. That has been my family's theme song of you got to have an ace in the hole. We used to go to your concert for about seven or eight years in a row before I went to college every New Year's Eve. And my brothers and I adopted the, um, the song as our own. We took it. We stole it. And... Um, the point to this, the reason I'm standing here, the reason that I'm able to be in front of all you guys, one, I love the game of golf. But the biggest impression that I had on me was my two brothers. I was just a kid wanting to be just like them. I had two parents who have given me every opportunity in the world. Dad, you've always figured out, you've always mapped out a plan, you've always told me to 
everyone who knows my dad calls him Biggie, you've always said work your ass off and good things will happen. And you told me never, never, never quit. The reason I won every tournament is because I have that from you and me. My mama passed away last Tuesday. Three days ago, we got this. Three days ago, we had to bury my mom. And it was awful. Because the lady you see in that video is the other part of my heart. And my dad's tough, but I think my mom is tougher than all of us. She should be the one standing here. She deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, not me. Um, what circles back to the whole ace and the whole thing? Hey, my ace and the whole have always been you, Tripp and Hank. It's always been you, Dad, and yes, Mom. Um, I have a new ace in the hole with my husband and our incredible family. Um, kind of switching gears for a second. Um, golf has always been a huge part of our lives, but not the only thing. I was diagnosed when I was 10 with type 1 juvenile diabetes. Everyone's like, oh, you don't look diabetic. You're not heavy. Well, a little bit of a uh, different type of disease, same disease, but different condition. So throwing this back to my mom, I go to the doctor's office and my blood sugar at age 10, I'm in the fifth grade, and it was September of 1987. My blood sugar was 376, and average is 80 to 110 on a good day. And I'm like, what does that mean? I'm a 10-year-old little girl. And my mama looks at me, and I said, Mom, am I going to be okay? Am I going to die? And she said, no. You're going to live with this, and you're going to beat it. Just simple as that. So her reassurance, my point is in that, in that moment, I realized that I was going to be okay. And... The doctor walks in, the nurse walks in, I'm like, what's that, it's a syringe. Here's an orange, here's a syringe. I'm like, what's the orange for? Well, you're gonna shoot the orange. I'm like, give me the needle, let me just start my first shot right here, let's do this, let's go. So from that day on, I've taken insulin, I'm, I'm 40, I know, crazy, but um, I turned 40 this year, and I have been an insulin de dependent diabetic for 30 years, but my whole point is my mom telling me, no, you're gonna be fine, you can beat this. It gave me the mindset that why not? Why can't I beat it? I spend every day of my life wanting to be great and wanting to be good. And I idolize those two, Tripp and Hank. We were playing soccer, or sorry, we were playing football. I was little. I was the only girl. I had pigtails with bows in my hair. Had a helmet, the shoulder pads too, and they're like, I'll take the girl. Neighborhood game. My brother's like, just hang on, grab their ankles, don't let go, we'll be there. And that's, that's kind of the, um, it's the epitome of my family. And I have nothing but great memories. I hope that my husband Paul and I can provide the same type of environment that you provided for Tripp, Hank, and I, Dad, that you and Mom did. I think it's an incredible example of your family can truly get you through anything. And what I've learned in the last several weeks is that I believe that our family is something very unique. Yes, we are difficult to deal with at times. We're a bit headstrong and stubborn. Honey, I'm grateful that you love me and put up with me because I, I can be a lot to deal with. But um, my point being is, is our family has always been the, the base and um, our base has always been strong. And you and mom built that foundation, dad. So I'm truly grateful. My husband, Paul DeRemus, um, I cannot thank you for everything that we've gone through and always having my back and always loving me regardless. And I'm genuinely grateful and you are the love of my life. To all my friends who have helped me tremendously, they're all here. Um, as I see them all looking at me, it's, um, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate y'all just loving me and being there and helping with our kids while we've been on this journey the last several weeks with my mom. Dale Walmstad and Colleen, thank you so much for coming. Every time I won an event, my motivation was going to Dale Walmstad's Del Frisco's or Three Forks at the time. <laughs> that was good, that was a very good, fun reward for me, but um, you always told me, do right and fear no man. You told me that when I was about 10. 
And he also told me, don't let the bastard grind you down. That's what he told me. And that has stuck with me. So I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I can't believe I haven't had a meltdown yet. I'm sure it's coming. Um, I would like to dedicate this to our mom. She's the Hall of Famer here. We're just her, we're just her kids. So thank you so much for the honor. I'm grateful to have all of you and be aside all of you in this room. Um, and I humbly and gracefully accept this award.